Welcome back friends, in this video we're going to create the enemy scene. In the end we're going to have this enemy that goes down and we can shoot it with our laser. Let's get started. Okay so the enemy scene is going to be very similar to the laser scene. So let's create a new scene first and we're going to make this an area 2D just like the laser. But this one we're going to rename it to be the enemy. Let's save it inside of our scenes folder. And in here, we're going to have a sprite 2D and a collision shape 2D. For the player, we use the collision polygon. This one, I'm going to go with the simpler option, which is a shape. But feel free to create a polygon for this as well. For the sprite, we're going to use the Spaceship 1 PNG that we have. I have a bunch of these. I'm just going to use the first one. Let's click on the inspector first and let's drag this here. It is a bit too large, probably just like the player. Let's go into the game scene and let's instance one of these. And next to the player, it does look a bit too large. So inside of the enemy scene, let's set the scale to be 0.65, let's say. And let's take a look at it. And that looks fine. Okay. So the enemy, just like the laser, needs a visible on-screen notifier, but it is going to be on the opposite side because this one will be going down instead of going up. I'm going to put this at the back just like laser so that we have a little bit of lag between the time this goes outside of the screen and the thing gets deleted. Let's also not forget to create a shape here. I'm just going to create a circle. This looks fine. And we of course need to create a script here. Let's put this inside of the scripts folder. Let's create it. And in here, we're going to make this go down. So let's create the physics process function. We need to access the Y property of the global position, just like we did for the laser. In fact, we can copy this and use this and it will work. But in this case, we don't want to say negative speed because we are going in the opposite direction. Let's create the export variable speed here as well and let's set this to be like 150 so this is going to be slower than the player okay with this much the ship should be going down if we run the game and as you can see it is but we can't really shoot it so let's work on that okay we need to start creating the interaction between the laser and the enemy and the enemy and the player because we also want the player to die when an enemy touches the player. I'm gonna go into the project settings, scroll down and go into the 2D physics section here underneath layer names. In here, we're gonna create some physics layers. The first one is going to be the player, second one, the enemy, and the third one is going to be the laser. And we're gonna go into the each scene, starting with the player, click on the character body and set the collision layer to be the first one, which it is by default. And this will look for, not for the player mask, but for the enemy. So because the enemy won't be shooting lasers, we don't need to check for laser, but if in the future we decided to check for the laser as well, we'll also check this one. Okay, so that's the player scene. Let's go into the laser area 2D here, into the collision options. This will be on the third layer and the laser will look for the enemy. And finally, let's go to the enemy collision here. And this will be on layer two, which is the enemy layer. And this will check for the player and also the laser. Okay, so we have the physics layers configured. The second step is going to be detecting the collision between the laser and the enemy. And because we made these area 2Ds, that's going to be extremely simple. We just need to decide, do we want to check that in the laser script or the enemy script? So I'm gonna do this in the laser script to check for the laser hitting the enemy. And then we'll do the enemy hitting the player inside of the enemy scene, enemy script. So inside of laser here, we're gonna go and check the signals. And we have an area entered signal here. We can simply connect this to the laser script. And we know that the only area the laser is going to interact with will be the enemy. 
But just for you know some extra checking, we can go into the enemy script first and add a class name here and set this to be enemy with a capital E. This lets us go into here and say if area is enemy. And we of course need to save it first inside of the enemy script. So the class name, setting a class name like this lets us use this name enemy to check if this area is an enemy or not. So in here inside of this if statement, we know that the laser hit an enemy. So what we can do is we can delete the laser with Q3 and we can also delete the enemy, which is this area here. But instead of freeing it directly, I'm just gonna call the die function of the enemy, which we didn't create yet. So let's go into the enemy script and create a function called die. And in here, we can simply say Q3. For now, in the future, we're probably gonna have a signal here that we're gonna emit to the game script. But for now, we can just call Q3. Okay, so now when the laser touches an enemy, the enemy and the laser both should be freed. So let's try this. I'm gonna shoot the enemy and they both get deleted. That's good, that's what we want. And now finally, we also want the player to be deleted when the enemy touches a player. That is also going to be simple to do. We just need to go into the enemy scene here and because enemy is an area 2D, it has all these useful signals. In this case, we're gonna use the body entered signal because the player is a character body. So the body entered signal is the correct one in this case. Let's connect it to the enemy script. And in here, we, we can do the same thing we did for the enemy. We can go into the player script, create a class name attribute here so that we can check for it inside of an if statement here. We can say if, this body, which is the argument here, the body that the enemy interacted with. If this is the player, we can call a die function on the player, which we're gonna create. And we can also call the die function of the enemy. Let's save it. And of course we need to create that die function inside of the player script here. And for now we can just call Q3. We will also most likely have a signal here in the future, but for now this will do. Are we still getting an error here? No, okay, great. So with this, now we should be able to touch the enemy with the player and they both get deleted, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so the next step is going to be spawning the player, but we're gonna do that in the next video probably. But let's do a small recap and then we can end this video. We created the enemy scene, which is just like the laser, it's an area 2D, it has a script, and in the script, we're making it go down instead of going up. And then we created the interaction between the player, laser, and the enemy by creating some physics layers and using the signals of the area 2D enemy and the laser. So inside of the laser script, we're deleting the enemy and the laser when they touch. And inside of the enemy script, we're deleting the player and the enemy when they touch. Finally, I think we forgot to use the visible on screen notifier here, so we can quickly connect the screen exited signal. And inside of here, we just need to free the enemy. And this should result in the same behavior as the laser. When the enemy goes outside of the screen, it should get deleted. Okay, great. Like I said, next step is going to be spawning the enemy so that we don't have to add it manually to the game scene like this. We can also get rid of this laser here and I'll keep the enemy until we create the spawner. Okay, great, thank you for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. If you want to learn Godot, I have a course where I teach the basics of Godot at a much slower pace for beginners. If you're interested, check the link in the description. Again, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.